Greetings and salutations. Welcome to my kitchen table. We're going to take a look at some of my favorite records. The last video was such a success, I figured we'd go ahead and do it again. And we're going to start out with movie soundtracks this time. Thought you guys might think that was fun. This is the soundtrack from the movie American Gigolo. The big hit song from this was Call Me by Blondie. And this album is basically like one big single for that song and a bunch of incidental music. Not really that uh, interesting unless you want to have the long version of Call Me by Blondie. That's where you can find it. Next record on the list. Now this is the, a different story. This is a soundtrack that kicked off a big trend in the 80s, and that was a fascination with music from the 60s. There was a bit of a renaissance of 60s music that sparked a musical movement called the Paisley Underground. If you like people like Prince and the Bangles, they were all influenced by this. This is the soundtrack to the movie The Big Chill, and it has a lot of hit songs from the 60s on here, which sort of set the pace for what would become oldies radio in the United States uh, with a 60s emphasis. A lot of these songs were played. And this uh, record is on Motown Records, which is interesting because Aretha Franklin is on here with You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. She recorded for Atlantic. <laughs> I think it's the only time you're going to find Aretha Franklin on Motown. This is one a lot of you will recognize immediately. The music from Cosmos, which is a television show that ran in the United States in the late 80s on public broadcasting network, uh, PBS. And it, of course, was hosted by Carl Sagan. Sagan, Sagan, that's the man's name, Sagan, yeah. And he was a physicist who taught a whole lot of us youngsters about the cosmos, man. Very cool show. That album's a favorite. A lot of classical and electronic music on there. Vangelis Alpha is one of my favorites from that album. Here's a recent acquisition. This is Good Morning Vietnam, starring Robin Williams, the soundtrack on a and Records. This is another album that features a bunch of songs from the 60s, specifically 1965, since that's the setting for the movie. Adrian Cronauer is the main character. He was a real person, and yes, he did go to Vietnam, and he was on Armed Forces Radio. I worked with a fellow named Dan O'Brien, who was also at Armed Forces Radio Saigon, but by the time Dan got there, uh, Adrian Cronauer had already left, and he had been replaced by Pat Sajak, the fella who did uh, the Wheel of Fortune show, or still does, I think, for so many years. Same guy. Adrian Cronauer, after uh, his radio career, bought an ad agency in Roanoke and retired there. He sold the ad agency to a fellow named Bill Thomas. I used to work in the Roanoke, Virginia radio market, and uh, I knew Bill. He was a nice guy. Never met Adrian Cronauer, though. Men at Work from 1982. This song is one of my favorite albums of all time and has a couple of big hits on it. Who Can It Be Now was a big radio hit and Down Under. They both went to number one. Uh, Be Good Johnny also got played on the radio. Great record. Fortunately, they were a very short-lived band led by Colin James Hay. And they sort of fell apart after about three albums. By the way, that Good Morning Vietnam soundtrack, the audio fidelity on that is amazing. If you ever come across one of those, the one I got is in perfect, pristine condition. And it's, it is really cool. Barry Manilow from 1975. This is Manilow 2, his first hit album. Not his first album. The first one was just called Mary, Barry Manilow. Uh, this was originally issued on Bell Records. This is an Arista reprint of this. This is the one that includes Mandy, and it's a miracle, and it also has a bunch of really uh, good songs on here. This was Barry Manilow before he became so schmaltzy. I mean, in the later 70s, he sort of became a parody of himself, I thought, with all the strings and whatnot, but that album is good. And then the next album is also one of my favorites from Barry Manilow. This is Trying to Get the Feeling, again, uh, Barry Manilow from 1976. And of course, the title track was a big hit off of here and several other tunes as well. Taking you back to 1971 for Gordon Lightfoot, this is If You Could Read My Mind, 
Very early pressings of this album uh, were titled Sit Down Young Stranger, and then when the single, If You Could Read My Mind, took off in the United States, they renamed the album. So let me move you here, sorry. You're a little crooked there. This is a great album. Uh, it's one of my favorites from high school days. Uh, Poor Little Allison, uh, Saturday Clothes is one of my favorites on here. And uh, Approaching Lavender is one of a really good record too. And of course, Sit Down Young Stranger, I love that one. Let's do a couple of country albums. Actually, we're going to do some country politan for you, which is uh, kind of a mix between country and pop music. This is Glenn Campbell's greatest hits on Capitol. And this is all the 60s stuff. This is By the Time I Get to Phoenix and Wichita Linemen and uh, all the Al DeLore produced records that were recorded in Los Angeles with the Wrecking Crew. So th these are very slick. Uh, they were country hits and pop hits as well. One of my favorites. I love Galveston, and I also like Where's the Playground Susie. Just a couple of weird records he did in that period of time. 68, 69. More country politan for you. Got a twofer from John Conley. John Conley was a country artist uh, that came along about 1978. His first hit was a song called Rose Colored Glasses. And here's John Conley's greatest hit, sort of a volume two. They didn't call it that, but this pretty much spans his entire career in the late 70s and the 1980s. These albums are actually quite rare today. A friend of mine named Laurent Bert Roussel picked this up for me in Canada. He used to be an airline pilot, so he would fly all over the country. And when he had time, he would have layovers in different cities, and he'd go to record stores, and he found these for me. Thank you, Laurent. I still play them to this day. John Conley's a very interesting fella. He was a funeral director from Versailles, Kentucky. That's spelled like Versailles, France, but you don't say it Versailles in Versailles. They will correct you. Then he was a disc jockey at WLAC in Nashville. Okay, The Mamas and the Papas from 1965, if you could believe what you see and hear, featuring the hits Monday Monday and California Dreamin', plus a couple of others that got on the radio. Great album, wonderful vocal arrangements. Go find it, you'll love it. From 1984, it's George Michael and Wham! Make It Big, which is really only two guys. And this album was a blockbuster in the United States. We had three number one songs on here. Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, Everything She Wants, and Careless Whisper, and the other stuff on here ain't bad either. And Freedom got a lot of airplay as well. Great album. That was sort of a throwback to the 60s, too. They were kind of doing like some Motown sound on there, going along with that 60s revival. Anyway, from 1980, Steve Winwood, Ark of a Diver. Fantastic album. The big hit off of here was When You See a Chance. I like the title cut and the rest of the album's good too. On Island Records. Now we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some artists where I've got everything they ever recorded in order. <laughs> yeah, I'm really showing off. Steely Dan, Can't Buy a Thrill from 1972. Walter Becker, Donald Fagan, and uh, Skunk Baxter, and Jim Hodder, and the rest of the band here. That was their first album. The big hits off of that were Reeling in the Years and Do It Again. Also, the song Dirty Work got some airplay. From 1972, or rather 73, this is their next album, Countdown to Ecstasy. This is when they were still a band. And this album has uh, Showbiz Kids, My Old School on it, and Bodhisattva. And then right behind it here in the pack is their next album from 1974, this is Pretzel Logic. This album was recorded with a bunch of studio musicians in Los Angeles. This is a little different. That's when they started kind of splitting off. I think Jeff Baxter had left by now, and he would, had joined the Doobie Brothers. And uh, so people like uh, Jeff Picaro are on here and David Page. The, what later became Toto plays on this album on a song called Night by Night when they were, they were just high school kids at the time. But they obviously impressed Walter and Donald. So that's 74. Here's uh, from 1975. Katie Lied featuring Bad Sneakers, Black Friday, and Dr. Wu, and Michael McDonald was part of the band at this point. There he is right there singing. Michael McDonald, who later went on to be part of the Doobie Brothers. He was actually stolen from Steely Dan 
by Jeff Baxter, who had gone to the Doobie Brothers. But Michael continued to record with uh, Steely Dan much later. I showed this in the last video. This is an EP. Um, this is the All Fours Steely Dan, Haitian Divorce, Do It Again. Steely Dan from 1976, a complete change of pace. This was recorded at A&R Studios in New York City with New York session musicians. It's the Royal Scam. This is when they really started getting funky and bringing in the bass and uh, more jazz stuff, green earrings. Um, Kid Charlemagne is on here. Haitian Divorce, what a great song. All right, Steely Dan, Asia from 1977. This is their, really their most critically acclaimed album, and I talked about it in the last video. Black Cow, Deacon Blues, Josie, Peg, all hits. Steely Dan's Greatest Hits, 72 to 78. This is a double record set, and it features stuff from the albums I just showed you, plus a couple of singles that were released. Uh, one F uh, from the... Um, there's a single on here called uh, Here at the Western World. I almost said FM, but FM came along later. That's the soundtrack to a movie that Steely Dan contributed to the same year that this came out, 1978. Now, here's an album that was supposed to come out in 1979, but it didn't. This was also recorded in New York City. They had a tussle with the record company, and it took a while for this to get released. This came out in 1980. This is Gaucho featuring Hey 19 and Babylon Sisters and uh, Time Out of Mind. Those were all radio hits from this record. Very slick. This is the last Steely Dan album. They didn't record anything together until for 15 years after that. So from 1980 to 1995, nobody heard anything from Steely Dan, although Donald Fagan had a couple of nice solo albums. One of my favorite albums of all time, Yes, 90125, their comeback record from 1984 featuring Owner of a Lonely Heart and Changes and several other songs that are on here. This was produced by Trevor Horn, and this album cover itself was a big deal because this is a computer-printed vector graphic they did on an Apple computer. From 1985, another one of my favorite albums, Paul Young, The Secret of Association. Paul Young was a big artist in England, He'd had a couple of minor hits over here, and this album just exploded for him. The biggest hit off of this was Every Time You Go Away, and I'm Gonna Tear Your Playhouse Down was another one. I just love the way side one of this record flows. Beautiful album. I was listening to this today, and it's really hard to see what you're looking at here, so I'll just have to tell you, and you'll because they didn't, it's it's just textured, it's not really printed. This is Cord and Spark from Joni Mitchell from 1974. Featuring Help Me, Free Man in Paris, Raised on Robbery. One of my favorite albums of all time. This was recorded in Los Angeles uh, with a lot of all-star musicians on there. Jose Feliciano, David Crosby, James Taylor. Great album. I was going to show this in the last video and I forgot about it. Joe Jackson, Night and Day, 1982. Uh, this is uh, his biggest album in the United States. And it had the song uh, Stepping Out on it was the big hit. One of my favorite albums from that period of time. Now let's do another one of those. Gee, I've got everything they ever recorded. Uh, this is kind of sort of. These are all the Billy Joel albums that were recorded with um, Phil Ramone as producer. So I figured we'd, we'd end up with this. The Stranger from 1977 was the first time that Billy worked with Phil. Then from 1978, uh, we have 52nd Street. Big hit off of this was My Life. Honesty was a big radio hit off of that. Great record, Stiletto. Uh, changing it a little bit from the kind of a jazzy New York City sound to more of a harder rock sound. This is Glass Houses from 1980. And this has a lot of rock and roll stuff like Sometimes a Fantasy. It's still rock and roll to me. Don't ask me why. All for Lane is one of my favorite cuts off of here. A live album from 1981. This is Songs in the Attic, and this song was recorded digitally back before they really had the equipment to do that. I've got a picture somewhere of this giant truck sitting out in front of Phil Ramone's house, and the computer that ran the digital mixing board or whatever they had had to have fans on it in the garage. It's amazing. 
Um, but yeah, that's a really good record. Uh, big song off of that was She's Got Away. I think this is my second favorite Billy Joel album next to The Stranger. As a matter of fact, I know it is. This is The Nylon Curtain from 1982. This had Allentown, Pressure on it. Uh, one of my favorite songs on here is She's Right on Time. This is just a great album, and I've got two copies of it here. I'm going to pull it out because I want you to see the cut on this. This was done with a machine called the CBS Disc Computer, which um, told the cutter head where to cut. And it, it, it's like margin control, but it's on steroids. And you can always recognize these albums because of the grooves. See the, the light and colored bands there? Uh, the disc computer would listen to the audio going in and delay it, and then it would instruct the cutter head on how to space the grooves and make all kinds of adjustments for the best fidelity on playback. And you can always tell one when you're looking at them. All right. 1983, Billy Joel, An Innocent Man. This was a throwback record he did, kind of in the 60s vein. Remember I told you about that? Trend in the 80s. Well, here's one of those albums. This is all songs inspired by 60s sounds. And this had a bunch of hits on this record. Tell Her About It was a big number one hit. Uptown Girl, uh, Leave a Tender Moment Alone, uh, The Longest Time. All 50s and 60s influence. That's why they're all dressed like that on them steps. And this was recorded in a rundown falling apart re recording studio in uh, New York City. One of my favorite cuts on there is Easy Money. That was done live. There's no mixing on that. That was just, they just recorded it and cut it and that was it and put it on the record. And then finally, this was the last album that Billy Joel made with Phil Ramone before he took a little break and decided to go off in different directions and he was recording with Mick Jones from Foreigner for a while uh, for the, the album that came after this. This is The Bridge, 1986. A lot of number one songs here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what was the name of that record? Hold on. Uh, this Is the Time was a number one. Modern Woman was really high up on the charts. Many songs on here that did really well. Not one of my favorite Billy Joel albums, except for one cut. The first track on this album makes it worthwhile, and that's a song called Running on Ice, which is kind of experimental avant-garde music and very cool. All of that is recommended. I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. That's all I got for today. Thank you for watching the video. We'll do another one of these again soon. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments. Thanks for watching.